Now, I've reviewed my share of premium laptops this year. I just did my unboxing and first look at the ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4. For those that didn't see it, check out that link below. I have a full review of that coming this week. Stay tuned. But I also wanted to give my full review of one of my favorites this year because I think this is the total package for the content creator. It has a really beautiful 17-inch IPS display, micro thin bezels with that infinity edge display, 11th gen Tiger Lake 8 series processors. It's got an RTX 3060 GPU and it pretty much checks all the boxes, but we're gonna find out if this is definitely worth your hard earned money. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Dell XPS 17 9710. Coming up. Now, as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from Dell. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $1549.99 and it goes up from there. Now my unit has the Core i7 11800H processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of PCIe NVMe SSD storage, and it has the NVIDIA RTX 3060 GPU. Now for those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy it. Now, I already did an unboxing and first look review on this. I'll leave a link in the description below. For those that didn't see it, I highly encourage you to check it out. The first thing that really stands out to you when you first hold this unit is just how good this build quality is and just how sleek and modern it looks. I absolutely love the build on this and I absolutely love the construction on this. Now, to me, this is one of the best and classiest looking laptops on the market. And it really fits in well and finds its place in the XPS line here it is with the XPS 15 and the XPS 13, all new here for 2021. And as you can see, this is one beautiful looking laptop. It really makes a statement. It's understated, but classy at the same time. And at 2.42 kilograms or 5.34 pounds, this is definitely not the lightest thing out there, but for a 17 inch laptop, it's definitely one of the more portable ones out there. That's for sure. And as far as the ports are concerned, it's very simple. You got a Kensington lock port and two Thunderbolt 4 ports, both located on the left side. On the right side, two more Thunderbolt 4 ports, a full-size SD card reader, and your microphone headphone combo jack. No USB-A ports, no HDMI ports. Luckily, you get those missing ports in the included dongle. Now to get inside this laptop, what you'll need to do is remove the T5 Torx screws and take your time when removing the bottom cover as it is on pretty tight. You may want to use a guitar pick or something very similar and work your way around. And once you do, you could pop off that bottom plate. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, there are two SOTUM slots for you to upgrade the RAM. This supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM and running in dual channel mode, of course, which is always good. And the good news is it's the x8 type ram not the x16 which is slower so we got the faster ram on this one where we got the slower one on the dell xps 15 so that's something to keep in mind so it's good to see the x8 and there are two ssd slots that you can upgrade yourself which is excellent this unit can support up to eight terabytes in total of ssd storage which i really do like now the unit that they gave me has one terabyte of ssd storage and as you can see from the reads and writes excellent results and this has killer Wi-Fi 6 AX1650 with Bluetooth 5.1. Now that Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade it down the road, but so far working really well in terms of the performance. To me, the star of the show has to be its display. And what we have here is a 17 inch 4K UHD plus display with a resolution of 3840 by 2400. That means it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. You'll see a taller nature as far as this display is concerned. You'll see more as far as spreadsheets, Word documents are concerned. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. Those are all positives in my book. 
and it has an anti-reflective coating on it, but it is not a matte display. It's slightly glossy, so you will notice a little bit of glare and reflections in certain lighting conditions, something to keep in mind. And it's also an HDR 400 display. So if you're watching high dynamic range content, this is highly optimized. It's going to really shine on this display. Now, this laptop is really geared towards that content creator that is looking for a really special display. And this definitely delivers in that department. We have some really deep black, some really good contrast on this. Excellent white points. And you also have good color accuracy. In fact, it's excellent with a 0.47 Delta E score, making this an extremely color accurate display. And it really covers the color gamut extremely well. 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, 91% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 93% NTSC, making this an excellent choice for content creators for Lightroom, color grading, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And with this being an infinity edge display, that means you're gonna get those really small micro bezels, giving you more screen real estate and giving you a really sleek and modern look. I definitely love that aspect of this display, that's for sure. And it's a really bright display. Now Dell claims this will get as bright as 500 nits while I measured 509 nits, even higher. So this is an excellent display when it comes to screen brightness. But unlike the latest versions of the XPS 15 and XPS 13, there is no OLED option available for the 17. Hopefully we'll see that available next year. Something to look forward to. But there's no denying that this IPS display is once again pretty amazing. So this is the front facing camera on the Dell XPS 17 9710 here for 2021. It's a 720p webcam, an infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition. How does it look? How does it sound in terms of the internal mics, noise compression and so forth, noise cancellation? I wanna know what you think about it in the comment section below. Is this good for Zoom? Is this good for your work from home needs? Uh, I am curious to know. So this is the Dell UltraSharp webcam, a 4K webcam, external webcam. A link will be in the description below for those interested for more information and where to buy one. And I think at about $180 to $200, it is definitely good, especially if you do work from home and you do do a lot of Zoom and Skype calls and stuff like that. This is definitely going to do the job. It's got presence detection. It has all kinds of things. It's an infrared camera that means you can log in with Windows Hello. There's a lot of things to like about this, but I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Now the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. It worked well, fast and responsive, setup was easy, and it registered my finger each and every time. It was a good implementation. And as I mentioned earlier, this has the Core i7 11800H processor from Intel. That's the 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor, eight cores, 16 threads. And my review unit also has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM. And as you can see from these results in these benchmarks, pretty good performance, especially when you pair it with this RTX 3060 GPU. And it goes without saying, everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, it all worked well on this laptop. But of course, this is also geared towards the content creator that does Lightroom, Photoshop, of course, video editing. It all worked well on this. And to give you an example, when you are doing video editing, say in Premiere Pro, it took 12 minutes and 12 seconds to render a 10-minute 4K H.264 in Premiere Pro 2021. And when you compare it to some of its competition out there, this definitely can hold its own, definitely scoring in these benchmarks, exactly as you'd expect with a Core i7 11800H processor. Now this RTX 3060 GPU definitely helps in the graphics department, giving you that extra horsepower when it comes to Photoshop, when it comes to rendering video and say Premiere Pro, as I mentioned, and things like that. Now, of course, you can game on this laptop, although it is not a gaming laptop per se, you definitely can get playable frame rates on certain settings. Check out some of these results in some of the more popular titles. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to put this under heavy load to see if this will thermal throttle, 
I noticed the CPU would turbo boost anywhere between 3.6 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz for about 90 seconds and reach a core temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Then it would drop anywhere between 2.5 and 3.4 gigahertz to maintain a cooler 82 degrees Celsius. So you can expect thermal throttling to keep it within reasonable range as far as these temperatures are concerned. Now, as far as the surface temperatures, it would get pretty warm above the keyboard and below on the underside, as you can see here, but nothing overly hot, nothing to the point where it's hot to the touch. Wasn't really an issue. And as I mentioned earlier, it has two fans for cooling and it employs vapor chamber cooling. And I would say the fan noise on everyday tasks wasn't too bad, wasn't too noticeable, and wasn't too much of a distraction. But when you ramp it up, when you do put this under heavy load, you will notice those fans kick in and they are noticeable, something to keep in mind. All right, let's talk battery life. And this has a pretty robust 97 watt hour battery and it did seven hours and 35 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, which translates into about six to seven hours in real world mixed usage, depending on what you're doing, of course. Now it takes about two hours for a full charge with the included 130 watt power adapter. And that's a little bit longer than most laptops because of its rather large 97 watt hour battery. Now the hinges on this are very sturdy, very stiff, so you're not gonna get any screen wobble, if any, and it goes back as far as you see here, as far as that screen is concerned. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, as far as the keyboard itself is concerned, I really do like it. It has really good tactile feedback, decent key travel, and it was good for comfortable typing for extended periods of time. I never felt like my fingers were bottoming out. It has a multi-stage backlight, allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Now the keys light up white and it worked well. Now one thing to note, this doesn't have a numeric keypad, so if you're crunching numbers, you might want to look at other devices that do have that. And the Precision touchpad is really nicely sized. It's a glass touchpad, very responsive, two-finger scrolling, buttery smooth, all the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on that front, and I have no issues as far as any looseness or any inadvertent clicks that plague previous models. And as far as the speakers are concerned, there are the same quad speakers from last year, and that's a good thing. Two 2.5 watt subwoofers and two 1.5 watt tweeters, full sound, rich, good mids, good bass, overall, good audio. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell XPS 17 9710 here for 2021? I'm absolutely loving this laptop. It's one of my favorites here for 2021. It's got a gorgeous 17 inch UHD plus IPS display, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, micro thin bezels, great screen to body ratio. You gotta love it. Good news here, no more battery drain issue that plagued last year's model. It has four Thunderbolt 4 ports, so that's going to be a lot of versatility, a lot of connectivity when it comes to this laptop, although it is missing a USB-A and HDMI port, but that will be made up with those four Thunderbolt 4 ports. Full-size SD card reader, which I love, especially if you're a content creator. Full, rich audio from the speakers, some of the best on the Windows side of things, still not quite as good as a MacBook Pro 16. I found the keyboard very comfortable, and I love its spacious trackpad. It worked well, super responsive. Of course, it's not a perfect laptop. There are some negatives here. No webcam shutter for privacy or security. It gets hot under heavy load, as I mentioned, and it has no USB-A or HDMI ports. These are not deal breakers by any stretch. They do give you a dongle in the box that gives you those missing ports. So that's a nice little thing that they did. Of course, this is gonna be one of my favorites of this year. I'm gonna give this a score of 92%, making the Dell XPS 17 my editor's choice for the 17-inch clamshell laptop here for 2021 definitely making it worth your money so what do you think about this bad boy the xps 17 9710 here for 2021 love the build on this pretty much the same exterior as far as last year it's actually it's exactly the same as last year and it's a good thing we got a 17 inch display on this 3840 by 2400, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, over 500 nits in terms of brightness, really everything you want on a display. It's here, the machine metal on this, the diamond cut edges, really gotta love everything that this brings to the table. Carbon fiber deck on the interior, although it still is a fingerprint magnet, but not quite as bad as previous iterations. 
Upgradability is great on this. Two SODOM slots, two SSD slots. They're PCIe 4. And you saw from the reads and writes of the included one on this, excellent results. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I got seven hours and 35 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi, 150 nits. You're looking at anywhere from between six to seven hours, depending on what you're doing in real world mixed usage. Not cheap, of course, it depends on the SKU you go with. I would recommend upgrading a lot of this stuff yourself, the RAM, the SSD, try to save in that department. Now I have the Core i7, 11800H processor, more than enough for most people. I don't think you need to go to that Core i9, save the money, invest it in some other place such as the RAM or the storage. I don't think you need to go to that Core i9. Most people won't appreciate that benefit because it's really limited in terms of the thermal profile. And as I mentioned, there will be thermal throttling. It will get hot under heavy load. And that's due to the thin and light nature of its chassis. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. But I think it's one of my favorite laptops of this year. It's definitely one of the better laptops or maybe even the best laptops for content creators, especially if you do Photoshop, Lightroom, and of course, Premiere Pro. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is another good one, good application for this. So I'm thinking this is one of my favorite laptops. It really is an all-arounder and it really is the total package. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.